Okay, so initially you're going to need some scissors to cut through these. And then there's some tape on it you got to cut. And then you want to come over here and be careful because sometimes the bike is leaning up against the side. So you want to like kind of have your hip up against it ready to go. Fit wings on you. And then yeah, and it'll tear down like that. Come to the other side. Tear down like that. And then be careful because the bike sometimes wants to fall out on you. If it's leaning up against the side. While we're here, like grab your scissors and you want to cut. There's usually a wheel, one or two wheel zip ties. Cut that. The back one doesn't have it. And you lift up. You can just lift this off. Put it to the side. And then what I like to do to get it out, come close right here. Get your hand under here, it's a nice grip. And then you'll want to put your foot on here because sometimes this thing wants to come with the tire. Lift up, bring to the side, go to the back, do the same thing. On the back, I like to grip right here. Right here on the back seat rest is a good handle. Same thing, put your foot down, get it out. And then put up the kickstand, of course. Kickstands down here, get that set, take off the plastics, you'll want to cut this stuff, release it, there's a zip tie right there, once you cut that it comes off pretty easy. This is where all the gear is in this compartment right here. Open this bag. You'll find this is the um, mirrors. There's a charger. This is the different foot pegs, the passenger foot pegs right here. And then this is the optional side foot pegs for right there. Here's the bag with all the different components and screws to tap. Pedals. This is for the battery. Here's a set of tools. And then so initially the first thing you're going to want to do is attach the handlebars. You'll need these screws right here. Once you've located two of these, you're going to want to install the handlebars. You need the large size hex wrench. And then if you need it, these, this is from the foot peg. It is cross compatible and it will work just as well as the usual bolt. So you want to get the handlebars and make sure the cords are kind of like in the right area. You don't want them to be like twisting over each other. And then you put this front part right here into the groove right here. And then the holes should line up really nicely. If it's not lined up right, you probably did something wrong and you might need to realign it. So then you put the bolts in. So next they're going to install the headrest right here. This is the display. And so you're going to want to get this cord that's attached to it kind of along the side and tuck it into under the body. And then you put it right here. And you try to align it pretty good with the screw holes. Usually you have to push it down and wiggle it around a bit. And then make sure these are on the side because these can get in the way. So you push those and they'll stay if you put it underneath the handlebars, right? So you're going to want to locate these, throughs, these three screws. It's the Phillips screwdriver head screws. And then find your screwdriver. And then you want to come up here, make sure the holes are aligned before you get going. 
just get them in there like pretty good not all the way because you want to adjust it usually a little bit and there's one more on the other side too So you get it aligned, and then get the screw in there. Now we can start tightening them down more because we have all the screws in. When you are installing these screws, you want to keep them at the same level just to make sure it's aligned and not tilted. Next we're going to install the fender shield. You want to locate the, the smallest pointy Phillips head screws. You're going to attach it to this, and you want to make sure this silver point, sometimes you have to install this silver point separately. It will pop right in pretty easily. Just line it up, make sure there's no uh, none of this below it, and just pop it right in. So you're going to want to install it like this. This part up, not like that, like this, and then make sure this is down so it goes on the bike like this. So this will go right here, and then this like that. Sometimes it is a little bit tricky to get these screws in. So what I do is I'll put the screws in beforehand, leave it on the ground. Cause sometimes you need a good bit of pressure. Make sure to apply a lot of pressure. Cause if you don't apply enough pressure, this part's easy to strip the screws. And then next we're gonna find these two longer flat Phillips screw, screws. You're gonna bring it over. I like to get the screw on the screwdriver first because it makes it easy. It's kind of a vertical application too. Line it up with the holes, put it in there, start screwing it in. Don't screw it all the way because you wanna get the other one in before it's too tight. And then get the other one in. Tighten them both, and that's good to go. So next you're gonna to wanna to take off these two screws because the battery isn't connected yet and we switch out the battery securing block. Once you have the screws undone, you'll wanna grab it on both sides and lift. That'll get the hooks unlatched. And then right here there's hooks as well, so you just pull like that. Grab your screwdriver. This is the battery securing point but we like to switch it out with a better one. Unscrew that. Find this. Put it right in there, line it up with the hole. The bowl will just drop right in. And screw it in. Make sure this is pretty tight because you don't want too many motion in your batteries and then you want to make sure the bike is off it's pretty common that it'll be on so you want to disconnect this point on the battery that doesn't have a terminal connected hold on to that screw find the loose red terminal put the screw into there and it's going to spark And it's going to spark a little, so what I like to do is hold it on this, put the screw in there, and then push it into place. If it's sparking repeatedly, make sure to push down these cords too while you're securing it, because it will make sure they stay in a downward position. And then if it keeps sparking over and over, that means the ignition is on. Just like that, and then push this on. And then we're gonna put the foot pad, foot, platform back on you'll want to get these these hooks in initially so start on one end and kind of like work your way in and like try to get it to grab up along the edge and then this part can be tricky but on both sides there's these and you want to like as you're pushing it down you'll want to like have fingers on both sides and make sure that these go into the proper slots there's three points that need to go into slots sometimes this will be raised and you just have to 
go like that with your fist or palm and just knock it down. And then reattach the screws and that part is done. So next you're gonna wanna to to lay down the bike on its side real gently. Hold on to the handlebars good. Just ease it to the ground. There are these points. Sometimes they come assembled, sometimes it doesn't. When it doesn't come assembled, you wanna locate this piece and then a pointy small Phillips screw. And you want to lift the edge a little bit and slide this in place. So you want this circular side coming out because that's like how it screws in properly. And then push it down, get that in there a little bit. And then screw it in and make sure it's going through that little steel fixing point. Sometimes I'll have to do both. It might be easier to lay it down on one side and then lay it down on the other side if it's unassembled. Next, we're gonna install the basket. You'll wanna locate these four medium-sized hex bolts. We'll come over here. You wanna line it up at the four holes. And then by hand, get them in a little bit. That'll hold it up. Next, we're gonna install the foot pegs. You'll wanna find out which foot peg goes where by the little indicator right here. This one says right. And then you'll want the 14 inch wrench that is included. Sometimes it's a bit hard to get in there, so you just kind of got to wiggle it around. Tighten as much as you can by hand, and then come through with the 14 millimeter. Get it nice and tight, so it's not gonna come loose. And the same thing on the other side. So this one is reverse threaded, so you're actually gonna have to spin it the opposite way to get it tight. Get your wrench in there and tighten it, just like that. Next, we're going to install the side foot pegs. You'll want a flathead screwdriver, but if you have to make it work with this, it will work. You'll just want to be extremely careful because it's easy to scratch. So get your flathead screwdriver, just kind of get it in there and then pop it out just like that. And then these are the foot pegs. You can tell like which one's on the right side because it'll be going backwards and it opens like this. You'll want to find these these bolts right here. Initially, you'll want to do the front one because it's easy to access it. And locate the large hex wrench. Just put it in place like that and start getting it in there. So next, you'll want to locate the back foot pegs for the passenger and two bolts to install this. You'll come to this plastic fitting and this part just pops right off like this. And then this is a 10 millimeter bolt. If you don't have a ratchet, you can sometimes make just this wrench work. Get it in like that, make sure it's lined up with the sides and use it kind of like a screwdriver. And then once it's loose enough, you can just do it by hand, it pops right off. So with this, you can position it in multiple ways. You can position it farther back, or farther forward. We prefer farther forward. So tighten this one in pretty good, but not too tight to where you can't adjust it, but it holds it. Get the other bolt. Line up the hole. And screw the other bolt in. Next, you'll want to find your mirrors and pretty much make sure it's on the right side. They'll go like this. You don't want it like that. And then usually there's these little small points and there'll be a plastic fitting in there and you just pop that off with your nail underneath it. 
and then you'll want to lift this plastic up and you'll see two bolts if you push it up far enough it'll go up along there but it takes a little bit of force and then you just want to get your hand right in like that line it up and then spin like in a motion like this Sometimes you have to wiggle it around to get it in there good. Get it nice and tight. And to adjust this, you come down here. This bottom bolt you want to be tight. This upper bolt is more of an adjustment bolt. You loosen that. You can adjust it a lot more and then really tighten that down so it doesn't lose shape. And then you can adjust the mirrors as you like. You wanna make sure it's somewhere in between the handlebars and the handle for the good alignment of the mirrors. So you're gonna to wanna to remove the cap off the tire nozzle and you'll want the tire nozzle at around the bottom of the bike, it's just easiest to access. You attach your pump. And then you'll wanna get the back tire to 36 PSI and the front tire to 30 PSI. Next, we're gonna do the brakes. They're very easy to adjust, especially on the go, which is very convenient. So you're gonna wanna pull the spring forward a little bit. That gives you some like leverage with this. Pull the spring forward, push this back, and then you can twist it. You wanna make sure there's some space. That's why you push it back and pull the spring. And you could adjust the brakes to the desired stiffness. Tighter makes more stiff, looser, less stiff. And then you come up here and check and make sure it's how you like it. Okay, that's pretty good, and that's how you do it. On a lot of the new bikes, this will come unassembled like this. So to set it up, it's very easy. You unscrew that. This is usually like on there. And then you wanna get the spring kind of forward. There's a securing point right here that you wanna get this into. So you get the cord to go through that little groove and then that'll slide into place. You push this back and then you put this right in these two grooves and then you get this through that hole. It takes a little bit of work working on it sometimes. And then once that's like that, you pull the spring back, get your finger around there so it gives you some space to attach the fixing bolt and then tighten it to do your desired brake stiffness. Next, we're gonna plug in the charger. Initially, it, you'll wanna fully charge it, and the screen will actually say that it's 100%, but it's not actually 100% for the first charge. So right above the cup holder, there is this port right in here, and you wanna make sure these edges line up with the edges on the port, and then plug it in. And then as you can see, it says 25%. So you'll want to fully charge it before using it first. So your first ride, you're going to want to check the alignment of the handlebar. Sometimes it'll be off a little bit. It's very easy to adjust. So just ride it real slow. Sometimes it's easy to keep it straight with your feet down to go slowly forward. Ride around. If it feels off, you'll know. This one is slightly to the left. So what you're gonna wanna do is turn it all the way and just apply slightly more force until it feels like you're kind of moving it. And then it looks like I overdid it a little bit. So what you do is you go in the opposite direction and you can also, like, one good reference is just watch the front tire. Like, you can check out the alignment a little bit. So while you're doing it, you can see if it moves some. And then check it one more time.
Just like that, the alignment's perfect and you're ready to ride. Safe riding.